It's, it's the same thing though, and, and, and I just hear the same response. It's funny because it's like, I could just tell what people are gonna say before they even say it. Now, if that isn't a sign of brainwashing, I don't know what is. When you can just be like, I know what their next thing is gonna be, it's gonna be, well, don't you know God is love? Well, don't you know, oh, that sounds like a Pharisee. Oh, you, know, it's just, you just hear these same things repeated over and over and over again. And it's the same fallacies too. It's, it's the same just, just lies and, and misunderstandings and not actually reading the scripture and just believing it for what it says. And instead, just, just listening to what some preacher says as opposed to what the Word of God says. And these days, this, this entire chapter here in Matthew chapter 23 is pretty much dedicated to the Pharisees. So we're going to look at this in depth tonight and we're going to see, because Jesus is giving a scathing rebuke to these Pharisees and he's really calling them out. And he's calling them names and, and he's, he's preaching really hard at these Pharisees. And I want to get into this because, like I said, there's people who will call fundamentalist Pharisees. And it's really just because they haven't read their Bibles. They don't, they don't understand who the Pharisees are at all. And when we get into the rebukes that Jesus gives to the Pharisees, we're going to see what is it that made a Pharisee, you know, a Pharisee, someone who, who's going to be denigrated or looked down upon in Christianity because they're just a Pharisee? Well, Jesus gives us all of the signs of who they were and what they were all about. And as we read this, we're going to see this. Um, the number one problem as we get into this chapter with the Pharisees is that they were hypocrites. That is... is just reiterated over and over and over again throughout this chapter and i'm not going to point it out every single time but he says woe unto you scribes pharisees hypocrites woe unto you scribes pharisees hypocrites he says hypocrites over and over and over again we're going to see it start off here that they are hypocrites now we ought not to be hypocrites in our christian life right amen but you can't go calling someone a Pharisee if you have no idea how they live their life. You only hear what they preach. See, because people want to call me a hypocrite. Oh, you hypocrite, you hypocrite this, you hypocrite that. I don't know how many times I get called a hypocrite because I say, I believe in the death penalty for homosexuality. Right. Oh, you hypocrite. Well, wait, am I committing homosexuality? And that's, uh, no. That would make me a hypocrite. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm out there doing exactly the same thing that I'm preaching hard against and oh you can't go out and do this that would be hypocrisy but when you're not doing that and we're actually following that's not hypocrisy it's a big difference see the Pharisees were these religious people who they didn't really care about the integrity of God's Word they didn't really care about serving the Lord they cared about themselves and they had to say what they thought were the right things. And they would say things to people, but they wouldn't actually do them. Let's, let's look at the passage. You don't have to take my word for it. Look at verse number one here in Matthew 23. The Bible reads, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. So you're saying, the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. Why? Because they're, they're of the, the tribe of Aaron. They're in the priesthood. But they're these Pharisees that are sitting in Moses' seat. So he's saying, because they're in that position, you know, when they're, when they're bidding you to observe something in the law, go ahead and observe it. But look at what he says. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. So one of the, the first thing that we see that he's rebuking about these Pharisees is that, yeah, they'll get up, they'll read the law of Moses. They'll say, oh yeah, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. And they'll go through and, they'll, and they'll, they'll read out of the law of Moses. But then they're going and they're being crooks. They're going, they're committing these sins, they're transgressing against God's law. And he's like, if you were to follow these guys and actually do what they do, he's like, no, don't do any of that. You could listen to what they're saying and, and do what they're saying out of the law but don't, don't go and actually live like they're living. But aren't we supposed to be examples? I mean, don't we see the Apostle Paul saying, hey, follow me as I follow Christ? Don't we see people that are lifted up to be good examples unto the brethren that we can actually follow? 
So you can't just take the, well, everybody's a sinner, so you can't. No, that's not true. You, everyone's a sinner, yes, but it doesn't mean you can't follow someone and, and try to pattern your life and use other people as an example of how to live. Obviously, Jesus Christ is the best example, but it is, there's nothing wrong with looking to men that are not hypocrites, that are living a godly, righteous life, that are living for the Lord and saying, you know what? I'm going to try to pattern my life a little bit after what they're doing because I can see that they're achieving a lot for God. I can see that they're really sold out. I can see that they are doing and not just saying. And you know, when people do what they teach, when people walk the walk that they talk, that has power in itself. That is, I've mentioned this before, that is the power that I saw when I went into Faithful Word Baptist Church, when it was just a tiny church meeting in, his, in Pastor Anderson's house. But I can see a man that not only was he preaching the truth, but I saw him walk the walk. I saw him go out and knock on the doors. I saw the way that he was with his family. I saw the, what he allowed into his house. I saw it firsthand. And I said, wow, praise God, someone who actually believes his word. Wow, that means something. I'm going to listen to this guy. I'm going to listen to what he has to say. I'm going to listen to his teaching and preaching because it's not just a bunch of words to him. It's not just religion to him. It's not just something he wants to check off a box. It's not just a position to fill. Oh, I'm going to work today and I'm going to pastor and I'm going to go home. No, it's reality. It's his life. It's my life. And hopefully it's your life too.